right guys, what's happening? Um, question of the day, I get asked all the time, all the time, concealed carry, how do you carry? What are the positions that you carry in? What are the different things that you do uh, when it comes to training with concealed carry? Uh, for those of y'all that are in the firearms community and you know there are a thousand different training aids out there, there's a, a million different videos on concealed carry, um, all the different factors that go into that. Uh, but I just want to cover a couple of specific uh, points that are important to me and things that I talk about in training, things that I kind of like to cover uh, when people ask me those questions. So um, here we go. My first and most important stance on concealed carry for myself is appendix carry, uh, which is directly right here in front of me. Some people like to carry a little bit more center. I like to carry a little bit closer to whenever my arms just naturally come up. That's where I like to grab. Um, just a little bit off center, but directly in front of me is where I like to carry, which is an appendix carry. Some people carry at the three o'clock, some people carry at the six o'clock. Uh, there's multiple different reasons you may do that. Um, it could be your physical body type uh, doesn't allow you to carry appendix. Um, it may be a specific situation that you're in or a mission set that you may find yourself a part of that uh, requires you to carry at a different position. I generally do not recommend ever carrying at the six o'clock for multiple reasons because Someone could come up behind you and see the firearm, especially if you're wearing a t-shirt, you could be printing, uh, which would put you at a massive disadvantage if somebody else knows that you have it. Um, the six o'clock, if you get into a physical altercation with someone, you could, you could perhaps fall on the ground and land on your firearm, which would cause a lot of pain in your back. Um, and that's in, just in general, it's just a very difficult position to get to and, uh, and you have to do a lot of body movement. The second thing is that, the body movement. I'm, I'm all about not wasting space, not wasting time. So if I have to come to the side or if I have to come all the way to the back, what that normally means is that I'm wasting time moving my body to the side or to the back to be able to get the firearm back out and engage the threat. Right here, appendix carry is to shirt up and out. But if I have to, if I have to adjust myself physiologically to get to the firearm, now I'm having to make adjustments where I have to go to the side and then come back. You can sometimes overcorrect and a lot of different factors, but it's a gray area for a lot of people. Um, that's just my stance on it. I don't define it as a black and white issue when it comes to this is the right way, this is the wrong way. It's just a specific way that helps you to become faster, helps you to engage the threat faster if you carry appendix. So body type, uh, wasted movement, going into those positions. And the third one for me is just specifically how you dress. So I don't like to have a holster that my firearm goes into where I have to adjust my clothing to be able to wear that holster. I like a holster that I'm able to just be able, that I'm able to just put on right when I get up in the morning, when I'm walking out of the house and I can have it on me. And the, the specific garments that I'm wearing, the t-shirt, dress shirt, if I have to tuck in a shirt, pants, all of those factors I, I take into, uh, I take into thought where I'm saying, how does this allow me to just be my normal self throughout the day? And is this holster allowing me to be able to do that? There are some holsters out there that you have to really change the way you dress. There's holsters out there like tier one concealed and G code tacticalholsters.com, where the holsters that they have, they're really form fitting to the body and you can wear a normal t-shirt and be fine. There is a level of printing with all kinds of different holsters. Uh, some is very, very minimal. Some is a lot. It just depends on the type of holster system that you have and the type of firearm that you have. Some micro subcompact firearms are in really small holsters and there's almost virtually no printing. And there's other ones where you may move a little bit side to side and then you may see a little bit of printing, but that's, that's kind of casual in anything. So the difference is, are you really printing where you're showing someone and giving away the fact that you have a firearm on yourself or is it just in general like you having a belt on, like you have a phone in your pocket or your pants or something like that and nobody really notices? So those are some of the factors. Tier 1 Concealed and G-Code Holsters, they make fantastic, fantastic holsters where they conform to your body. You can also have an additional mag caddy which allows you to carry an additional mag on that holster system, which I always recommend. Um, two is one, one is none. So those are some of the specifics that I think about on a daily basis whenever it comes to concealed carry. So if you guys have any questions, any concerns, you want any other topics for me to cover, uh, just let me know and I'll be glad to help out as much as possible. We have more videos coming up soon, some training dates getting ready to be announced. We're still working on the range, getting some things updated and some things taken care of. 
But things should be rocking and rolling here pretty soon. I'm going to be letting you guys know about all that. Anyway, this is Barton with Grizzly Tactical Solutions. I'm out.